everyone, this is Yvonne and today we will be talking about radiology and how to apply to get into radiology. A little bit about me, my name is Yvonne, I'm going to be starting my radiology training in August and that is at Imperial College Healthcare Trust. Here's my email in case if anyone wants to message me, I'm very happy to be in contact. And today I will be talking a little bit more about how you can get into radiology. Why someone would like to go into radiology, I think it's quite personal for majority of people, but a few benefits that I personally think are there is quite a well supported specialty. You have a lot of guidance throughout your training. It provides you a great work life balance. It's surrounded problem solving and you can get into that quite early on as you have to report from early on. It's varied and you also get to interact with a lot of different people from the multidisciplinary team and you're a very important part of that as well. There's great demand which means that there's probably going to be quite a lot of private work in the future and also there's also the aspect of telemedicine which means that if you're interested in working from home that is probably the specialty for you. There are also other opportunities like research and being innovative and using AI and it's all kind of fascinating if you're more um, interested in that facet of things. There is no bleeps, there's no word rounds, there is no angry relatives, okay? So all of that are quite beneficial for me. In terms of disadvantages, it has quite difficult exams. There is no patient ownership, for example, interventional radiology, you operate on someone that is referred to you and then you send them back to the original team. There is, you don't choose who gets to have the scan, you only support the clinicians. And also with increasing workload as there's more things to scan these days, then there's also uh, more pressure. How the training program works, you have your F1, F2. I'm currently an F2 at West Middlesex Hospital. I didn't take an F3, so I'm going straight into programming. Say, so I'm going straight into training. However, um, you can take a year out and then apply or go into other specialties and then apply. I was applying this year. It's all quite manageable to do whilst you're doing an F2. There is three years of core training and two years of subspecialty. That can be up to three years of sub subspecialty if, like me, you're more interested in interventional radiology. But six years is the maximum. It's quite a short uh, training program for the UK standards, at least. You have three exams. These are important to know for your um, applications so that you know that you, you know what the training program looks like. You have part one, which is an anatomy and physics exam, which is an anatomy and physics exam at the end of your ST1. You have part 2A, which is at the beginning of your ST3, which is um, revolving around, is a written exam around all of the specialties, all of the core specialties. And then you have part 2B, which is a reporting session and a viva. And that happens at the beginning of ST4. This is a brief overline of the application process, which I imagine is what most of you are interested here for. So in November, it's quite a competitive application process in 2020. In 2022, it was six to six to one, roughly. I think this year it will have been about around ten to one. Therefore, you have to maximize every opportunity you can in order to get your um, job offer. So in November, you apply on Oreo. There is no white space questions. It's just a self-assessment score. You put your references and you're done. So it's not very time consuming. Following that. You have your MSRA in January. That is probably the most important aspect of the application, unfortunately, because it counts for 40% of the total scoring and also is the requirement. It's like to be, it's a shortlist requirement to get an interview. Therefore, it's something you need to spend a lot of time and focus on. It's a make or break thing. Then you get your interview offers in February. Then you get to submit your portfolio evidence later in February. Therefore, although you have to have all of your points by November, so all of your qualifications by November, you have some time to collect the evidence in order to submit them in February. 
interviews typically happen in March and then end of March uh, or April you get your offers. In terms of the components counting towards the offers, obviously, as we said before, MSRA is a cutoff. Therefore, you need to get a minimum to get into an interview. But following that, you have 30% of your portfolio, 40% is the MSRA, the biggest component, and then 30% is the interview. So what you can do now is definitely work on your portfolio. This is a rough overview of uh, the self-assessment scoring sheet. It's out of 45 and these are where the points are allocated. Looking at this more closely, commitment to specialty is something that you should definitely get. The easiest way to get it is two taster weeks. This needs to be at different kind of hospital settings. So DGH versus a tertiary center is a way of doing it. Student choice placements, for example, in my fifth year, I did a student choice placement in interventional radiology at St. Mary's. I use that as a proof of my commitment specialty. If you've done any clinical research uh, project in radiology, so you worked with any radiologist and you did maybe a poster or something like that, you can show that that is commitment to radiology. For example, I did an observership in the US for three, four weeks um, in pediatric interventional radiology at the time. And I could have used that as well. Leadership, the best thing to get is basically national radiology leadership position. However, and also suggestions how to do that is if you want to join IR juniors or any of the other um, national committees. What I did though is we found Radiology Society at Imperial when I was in final year with a few other colleagues of mine. And then we organized a symposium with two, three other London universities. And we invited people from across the country and that was considered a national symposium. Therefore, as we were all involved in organizing this, it was a big committee, it was a national committee for this um, symposium. So I used that and got maximum points. Therefore, try and see what you have. Obviously at the time I didn't know that would be a requirement for the, for, I, obviously at the time I didn't know that this would have been a requirement, however, it was um, quite beneficial and I presented in a way that gave me maximum points. In terms of teaching, um, it's not only important to get feedback whenever you do teaching, you also need to have organized teaching, whether that's a, on a regional or a national level, ideally. And then following that, teaching qualifications, the maximum point is if you have a master's in education, if you can get that, that's excellent. PG cert is a shorter way of doing it. It usually takes about a year. Again, if you apply next year, it's probably too late. Uh, however, the most easy way of doing it is, and something that almost everyone who's applying should do this, is teaching the teacher course is one week and it gives you two points. In terms of audit and quality improvement, you need two quality improvement projects related to radiology. I have a friend of mine who used DEXA, I use ultrasound, anything that's related to radiology. Um, and it needs to be a closed loop, it needs to demonstrate a change that usually means you collect data, you do an improvement, and then you collect data showing the improvement. And again, this is probably something you should all have for your applications. Something you should all have for your applications. In terms of your academics, having a PhD, if anyone has that, congratulations. However, the most feasible thing to do is be either first named author in a radiology publication or a first name author in an oral presentation related to radiology. Presentation is probably easier to get, still achievable, I'm not sure when, and it's still achievable. You can use BSIR and other conferences to try and achieve that. I'm really sorry that this is a bit of interventional radiology focused, but it's my personal interest. In terms of prizes, a uh, National Society of Radiology Prize, BSIR again has a competition about essays, maybe you can get submit one there and get the poster. Maybe you can submit an essay and get a prize or I did, or alternatively, if you have a distinction in your uh, final year of medical school that gives you the maximum points. 
MSRA, as we said before, is the most important aspect. Here are the specialties that it's useful for. However, the one I'm gonna be focusing on is radiology, obviously. Um, you have the professional dilemmas, it's 50 scenarios of SGT style questions. The most important resource to use is the UK FPO and the official resources given. You can try and practice with other like question banks. However, I would say get it, to get into the mindset of the examiners, you need to use the examiner resources. In terms of your uh, clinical aspect of the MSRA is what you can practice on, MCQ bank, uh, past medicine, past test, e-medica. You don't have to do all of them. I personally did past med and MCQ, and some people recommend doing them a few times. It's whatever works best for you. However, it's ultimately very important to do well. Lastly, the interview is pretty straightforward. It's a 15 minute interview about yourselves and it's split into four parts that they give you before. It's commitment specialty that is for two minutes. It's how you cope under pressure that's for five minutes. An ethical scenario that's another five minutes. And then your skills and how they attribute to a good radiologist. You know from before how the style would be. It's good to practice, however, not to be too rehearsed. Um, and it's good to practice, but not to be too rehearsed. And that is all for me. I hope this was useful and all the best in your applications.